Now, even toy mavens have to sleep sometimes, right? Wrong. No naps allowed on May 3rd because one minute past midnight, the Brandon Toys R Us store would open its doors. The occasion? The debut of Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace Toy Line. Battle droids had to be assembled, end caps had to be accessorized, and boxes and boxes of figures and toys had to find their place. Outside, the crowd knew what they wanted. Star Wars figures. You gotta have them, they're coming out. I'm here for the, smar the smiling Darth Maul. Let's go, I'm, I'm mainly looking for the figures. That's, so I, don't, you know, I think there'll be plenty of those to go around. Darth Maul, I wanna check out Darth Maul. He's, he's gonna be the new king. The line stretched down the sidewalk. Every Jedi was anxious for their first glimpse of the new characters. I'd say because it's based on mythology. You're talking about a story that has heroes and villains, and it's not just science fiction, it's, it's, it's about people. Our store is one of the largest, if not the largest, supplier of Star Wars items right now, and we're going to continue to do everything we can to make sure that the customers are satisfied and we keep getting more in. As the figures emptied out and the sales were tallied up. This merchandise is based on the latest Star Wars movie, The Phantom Menace. The toys were on sale just after midnight, and Stefan follows the force behind the buying frenzy. The movie doesn't come out for two more weeks. But the movie fans are out now. Anything to see, isn't it? But collectors were clearing out bins like these, spending $300 a trip. The buyers are adults because most of the kids weren't alive when the first Star Wars movie came out 22 years ago. I don't know what it is about it that speaks to me as much as it does, but I've just always been a really huge fan. And they got me little and kept me ever since. It has a magic, Star Wars. That magic doesn't lie only in its brilliant special effects. Its power derives from its spirit of romance and adventure. It's like the movies and cliffhanging serials of the past. It's an exciting and very special fantasy. And when it came out, the world went instantly Star Wars crazy. On the eve of Star Wars release, 20th Century Fox, George Lucas, and the cast and crew braced themselves for the worst. One way or another, May 25th, 1977, would be a day they'd never forget. We released, I think, 37 theaters initially and broke 36 house records. I used to drive by and look at the lines and think, what? I mean, it was the first sort of blockbuster. The film is breaking attendance records all over the country. Not since Jaws have so many people stood in line to see a movie. Star Wars cost $9 million to produce. It will bring in at least 10 times that amount. As a result, the price of 20th Century Fox stock has doubled in the last two weeks. The attendance at Star Wars has been almost astronomic. Queues are still forming. What is the attraction of Star Wars? Who can say? There have been lavish spectaculars before. Perhaps it's because this one takes the best from all the rest. In London, after a month, almost 600,000 flocked to see the film. An all-time record. In America, more money was taken at box offices in one week than for the prestigious Jaws. May 1977, a legion of fans are already waiting when Star Wars opens at Hollywood's legendary Chinese theater. Similar record-breaking crowds gather at the openings in Australia and England. Eager moviegoers rewrite the record books around the world as George Lucas' science fiction adventure becomes an unprecedented international phenomenon. There has indeed been nothing like it in the history of the movies.
It's almost midnight and the countdown is on here at the Esquire Theater because at 12.01 a.m. Wednesday morning, the first official showing of The Return of the Jedi rolls onto the big screen. The force of the Jedi cast its spell on Chicago's sold-out audiences throughout the dawning hours. By 8 a.m., over 9,000 starstruck fans shared the new secrets of the Empire. The galactic faithful gathered in droves to put on a show to rival the epic featured inside. The first showing of Return of the Jedi at Highland Mall was at 11 this morning, but the line you see winding around three sides of the theater started forming at 10 for the 140 show. That's how the movie is being received here in Austin on this premiere day. Some people are predicting the Return of the Jedi could topple E.T., the extraterrestrial, from the top of the box office hit list. And it might when you have people who will wait in line for hours to get a ticket, especially those who get there at 5.30 in the morning. A new movie, the third in the Star Wars series, opens on Wednesday. And when it opens in Hollywood, some will have been waiting in line for more than a week. It won't open for two more days, but already the lines are down the block. These are the 50-odd, emphasis on odd, men and women who've camped outside a Hollywood theater, some for the past six days and nights, to be first in line for Jedi. And all over the country, Star Wars fans have been waiting in line for tickets to tomorrow's opening of Return of the Jedi. It isn't so much that the film set box office records wherever it played, but rather that it played such a large role in the lives of many who came to see it. They came and they waited for Star Wars and for each of the two sequels that followed. In city after city across America, the same scenario was repeatedly played out. People will camp out overnight to see the Rose Parade. And um, this is worth at least three times as good as the Rose Parade, so we're here for three times as long. We've been here for six days and it's great! Some even got married in Star Wars movie lines and spent their honeymoons inside at the movies. This is f***ing awesome. Yeah! We're here at Groman's Chinese Theater, the place where Star Wars premiered 25 years ago, and now it's happening all over again. We're here for Attack of the Clones. Here's how it looked across the mainland tonight as the movie opened up. In Raleigh, North Carolina, more than 100 people lined up for the opening of Star Wars. And in Chicago, fans have been in line, some for as many as 10 days waiting for the film to debut, live at the Signature Theater, inside the theater. 
These are my people. Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker, put down his lightsaber today to walk his mom down the red carpet at the charity preview screening of Star Wars 2, Attack of the Clones. Star Wars, Attack of the Clones. Some camped out for months to be the first ones inside. Fans say they couldn't wait for the new movie to come out and didn't mind waiting until midnight to see it. One employment expert estimates as many as two and a half million people across the country will call in sick today with the so-called Star Wars flu. Advanced ticket sales have been brisk. Even a weekday matinee ticket may be a tough get. The employment firm Challenger, Gray and Christmas estimates more than two and a half million people may conveniently catch the Star Wars flu and call in sick to work today. You're looking at uh, close to 320 million in, in wages that are going to come off the books on opening day. Michael, we're already, uh, we're only three hours away from the premiere of Revenge of the Sith in this place. Well, it's already packed. Tickets to the first show, they sold out weeks ago and hardcore fans, well, they began lining up as early as last night to get those best seats of the house. Well, we are only two hours away from the premiere of Revenge of the Sith. And if you want tickets to the first showing at midnight and you don't have any tickets already, forget about it. They sold out a long time ago. More than 500 people are here. You see them here? They're lined up through the door and around the corner. hundred galactic fans will get to see a preview screening but most won't be able to get in to the sold-out event let me show you the scene back here this is the promenade in Modesto where the stars strolled down all of them saying that they were excited to catch an early peek at the end of a saga <clears throat> screaming fans couldn't get enough of Mark Hamill tonight outside the Brendan theaters Hamill played Luke Skywalker in their original Star Wars trilogy and was welcomed back a hero. It is quite the scene down here in Modesto. It was an event of colossal proportions fitting for the last movie in the Star Wars series. Oh, it's a dream. It's for more than a decade now, there's been a burning question on the minds of Star Wars fans around the world. If people take away one thing from seeing this film, what do you want them to take away from the whole saga? Uh, well, ultimately, uh, how you, what it is that caused you to turn to the dark side and what the consequences are. The movie is pure escapism, no big social message. But these days, with the way the world is, there is a lot to escape from. So it's a good bet that many Americans this spring will be going to that galaxy long ago and far, far away. It's a lot of fun to watch Star Wars. People would say, may the force be with you. It was a kind of code, almost. It proved that you were one of the, the people who had seen the film and you were connecting with other people who had seen the film. Star Wars became a, like a kind of handshake. I think one of the key factors in the uh, success is that it's a positive film. It has heroes and villains and uh, that it essentially uh, is a fun movie to watch. Please like, subscribe and comment on the video. May the force be with you. Impressive.